President Polk and many other Americans wanted the land known as California and other Southwestern territories. I will give you $30 million for all of this. Not uh After failing to buy the land from Mexico, Polk then devised a plan. The respected border for a long time between the U.S. and Mexico was the Nuez River. Polk was going to send Zachary Taylor to lead U.S. soldiers past the border and to the Rio Grande, saying that that was the border. I want the lands to the west. It's part of Mexico. And the only way to get it away from them is war. I need you to take a group of soldiers and set up a base at the Rio Grande. He would then provoke the Mexicans to attack, starting a war where the U.S. would win and the terms of surrender would be half of Mexico. After an American soldier was found dead, Polk told Congress, Mexico! has passed the boundary of the United States of America, has invaded our territory, and shed American blood upon the American soil. Congress declared war. U.S. troops marched across the country and sailed across the ocean as the Mexicans mounted a defense to defend their home. War went on. The U.S. kept pushing to gain more territory, so many soldiers died on both sides. So many innocent Mexican civilians died. As towns and cities burned, U.S. soldiers would kill all of the men and rape the women and girls. Sir, there have been heavy losses on both sides. We are losing men faster than we can replace them. Don't you think that we should call off the attack and wait for reinforcements? Evacuate? In our moment of triumph? I think you overestimate their chances. Many of the generals, like Taylor, wanted the war. It was a way to attain respect and glory through battle. They could care less about their soldiers. This war was a game to them. From terrible conditions, poor pay, and doubt of the cause, many U.S. soldiers deserted from the military to join the Mexicans in the fight. I surrender! What the U.S. is doing is terrible! This war is unjust! So much death! And for what? I would like to join you and fight against the U.S. so that we can stop them before they take everything! All of the land that the U.S. and Mexicans were fighting over was Native American land. During the war, no one saw that. The country that you inhabit no longer belongs to Mexico, but to a mighty nation whose territory extends from the great ocean you have all seen or heard of, the Pacific, to another ocean thousands of miles towards the rising sun. You have nothing to fear from us, if you do what is right. And are faithful to your new rulers. We shall watch over you and give you true liberty. But beware of sedition, lawlessness, and all other crimes. For your liberty can be taken away, and punishment will be dealt swiftly, efficiently, and without mercy. What do you mean, your land? What do you mean, Mexico's land? This land is ours. We roamed it for countless generations. You have no right to claim it. No one does. This is an example for you all. God has led us to the West to expand our might, our power, and our wealth. Let him be an example of those who can test our right to might. Lieutenant? Shoot him. In the end, Mexico was doomed to fail. That is why Polk waged this war. That did not trifle with all hope though. Even in the end, Mexican soldiers were ready to fight to the end to defend their home.
out there, our comrades, friends, brothers, are dying to defend our country. These invaders have come here to take our land. Well, if they want it, let's give them a fight. Show them that Mexico is not something to underestimate. For there is still hope we can win the day if we believe in ourselves, in each other, and fight, fight to the end, fight until we have won the day. After the U.S. took Mexico City, Mexico signed the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. The U.S. bought California and all of the southwestern land of the U.S. today. They took half of Mexico's land. The U.S. then paid Mexico $15 million to be able to say that they bought the land and did not seize it. Both sides lost thousands of soldiers, and Mexico, thousands of civilians. The victor wasn't the Mexicans, of course, not the U.S. soldiers, not the Native Americans, then who? Oh yes, of course, Polk, his generals, and all of those rich plantation owners who now have the chance to increase their wealth and prosperity tenfold from the newfound land.